Mike the Ref Maloney, Big Bad Boris on the call here tonight. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let go. Super Kick Party! Yeah, pay the money for that. No one. And of course, you gotta get the coffins. Hey, yo, 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 and away we go. Happy Saturday night, Wowsy well, we and Holy B. We are here, and life is going good. Joined by my little pal Wayne over here. Just, there we go. Just give him a little pat on the head here, and just hope everybody here is having a great week. Uh, Mr. Iceman, I am glad you are. Mr. Levy, I'm happy you did. Uh, Cameron, hope you had a good day today. Hope your uh, arm feels a little better today as we are going along here. Uh, welcome to tonight's AEW Collision Sidecast. Always fun to uh, check out some wrestling on a Saturday night. Hit a walk-up. Ooh. Walk-up Grand Slam down 3-0. Jeez. Well, you guys only go through. You guys only go uh, seven eggs. Okay. But yeah, that that's pretty awesome there, Cameron. Good for you. So ha happy you got a chat. You are really showing off there. Just hope your arm feels better because you know what? It, as much as you are put, putting out numbers, if your arm goes, you ain't gonna. It ain't gonna be good. So just glad it's not feeling as sore today. Oh, he be killing. Thank you, uh, first time chat. Yeah, our uh, resident 2K24 playgrounds expert here. Uh, yeah, uh, you could actually do that under your uh, Twitch rules. Um, first time, first time. Yeah, it pops up right on my screen. It's first time, so uh, you can under your uh, moderation rules here, under your profile. You can identify first time rules that'll pop up in your chat here and yeah i try to keep things pretty loose and decent just don't be an idiot more than anything here oh there we go finally it showed up i hate how the AEW uh show on the uh app takes forever to show up on the screen here especially with such a great card tonight for those that are just tuning in here uh we are watching uh, AEW collision on uh TSM Plus for those in Canada, TNT for those in the U.S., and I believe it's Fight Plus on the uh, internationally. So if you're on, feel free to pop in here. But how are you guys all doing tonight? I know uh, Cameron's had some excitement in, in his ball game today. Iceman's having a great day. AB Killett, I hope you're having a great day as well. Uh, yeah, for those that are new here, welcome. Always good to see you here. And, uh, yeah, we chat wrestling, chat a little bit of sports. Uh, like I said, I got my pal. I'm going to line this up eventually one of these days. I got Wayne here with me. Uh, hopefully, bring some good luck as we go along here in the Stanley Cup Finals. There we go. Now we're back. Uh, sorry. Twitch puts these ads in when they feel like it. So it's it's uh, five minutes in and then every 25 minutes after. So we just have to live with what goes on here and... Once again, this will be, uh, show will be up here in just a moment here. How was events last night? Uh, second game was better than the first, but I still gave up, uh, I, I just can't control my pitching that well, so. Must be a bigger deal than Adam. I've not seen this many ads. He probably has ads turned off though at Adam, so. I, I I try not to shut him off. He he puts him as rare as possible. I also do feel that it's it's better if you run more ads, more smaller ads, just to get him out of the way. Yeah, the game's actually starting right now. Ironically enough, the uh, hockey game. Hey, Ed, how you doing? Hope you're doing well here and. I know you got a big day tomorrow with uh, NXT Battleground coming up. Hey, 
And we got a big game coming up right now here with uh, Corey Michaels. Uh, I do believe he works for Body Slam. Uh, he came up with the best term for this match here tonight. We got Balded Wheeler versus Balded Wheeler. So. Jordan Grace hold that NXT sounds so appealing. The only way I could see the the only way I could see Jordan Grace wave that title tomorrow is if uh, the against all odds she puts it up on, on the line and Roxanne shows up on at against all odds. Then maybe you could see it because it'd be a quick switch. I don't see it. If it doesn't, if it happens now, it's not going to happen for a long time. So this war, yeah, this absolute war, Jay Quick. I'm actually surprised they're putting this as the yeah. Thank you for taking the words out of my mouth here. Like I'm looking through this card here tonight. Let me just pull it up again here, because I was looking like this had to be the obvious main event here. But there are we photos. I guess they're going to go with O'Reilly Cassidy as the main, which means we're going to get another run in from Trent and uh, Chris Statlander, apparently. Because I don't know where other way we're going to go here. We got Robin Renegade, Chris Statlander. We got Dustin Rhodes and Johnny TV tonight. Daniel Garcia versus TBA. Well, not TBA. He's got a name here, but. I, I believe cannon fodder would be the right way to put it. I wonder if Omega would ever make a deal with the BCC to take out the elite. Problem is, they tried to do that. Not this. Not uh, this anarchy in the asylum, but the one previous. And they lost. Love that the crowd started with a dub chat right off the bat here. So, Chad, I know I know a lot of you guys are from America, so I just have to throw this in here right now. You guys talk about promo snags like WWE fans try to get on AEW for promo snags, and and uh, AEW does the same thing for WWE. It's it's both sides. What about the staff food that the NFL found out about this week? The the match that uh, the NFL has taken to Brazil coming up this upcoming season has uh, it's going to be in Corinthian Stadium, which is one of their biggest stadiums in in Sao Paulo. There is a rule in the uh, in the arena. No team, no, no fans, no one is allowed to wear green because apparently the other, t the opposing team, the arch rivals of uh, Corinthians is, is the uh, hope is technically you know, all green. Well, the two teams that they sent down there are the Packers and the Eagles. Two predominantly green teams, two teams that wear green in their road uniforms as well. So basically they have to find a way to get out of their uniforms into something else. The only thing they could do is maybe the retros. Because the retros for the, uh, the Packers are blue and, blue and gold. And I do believe the retros for the, uh, well, you could actually do the uh, all whites for, uh, for the Eagles in that case, but who knows? The, uh, FTR looks weird in pants. Uh, here's the thing as well. You got, uh, you got Dax here wearing a weight belt. Oh yeah, fans are subject to the same rule. No greed allowed. That's where that's where it's more associated with. 
So that that for me is one of the biggest what the heck moments there in the sporting world this week. And we got we talk about all these other sports organizations being on top of everything. I'm sorry, but the NFL just flubbed a big one too. So it's almost as and the reason I brought it up too. Clash of the Castle uh, in Scotland. If you're not familiar with sports teams in Scotland, uh, there are two major teams in Scotland. There is the Rangers who wear blue and red as their primary kits. And then there's also uh, Celtic who wear green and white as their major kit. And they are people fist fight in the uh, parking lot. Enemies to each other. Hey Zodiac, good to see you here. The night. Uh, so Clash of the WWE has announced their Clash of the Castle uh, soccer kits. They made some soccer jerseys up for for the event. They're blue and red. So WWE is willing to incite riots in their arena for this show. Granted, there aren't getting that many fans to begin with right now. Apparently, the floor is, like, a- as barren as my social life most days. Outside of streaming, because I love you guys. But I guess I should throw that in there just as a token, uh, you know, break up the momentum there. But but Zodiac, I just want to wish you best of luck in your Stanley Cup final, even though my buddy Wayne here might think something different here. But... We all we all hope for a fun contest, a fair contest. So I wonder if we get bucks and a claim to the forbidden door. Um I don't think so. Uh, first of all, it should be somebody from New Japan or CML. I'm thinking if if you're getting uh if you're going to get BCC against some version of CMLL, which very well could happen here, I don't think you want to do two multi bad match. Sorry, two multi bad matches of those groups. But I could see a team like Suzuki Goon take it on the acclaimed. just because you want somebody as sort of a hired assassin trying to take out uh, the acclaimed here on the pay-per-view. So the only thing that would suck is, you know, the acclaimed deserve to be on the pre-show. So, and whoever's facing them, they, they probably deserve main event status compared to them. Well, caster, let me correct myself. I love how they're face and face here tonight, these two teams. And yet, yeah, Cash throw out that one little head butter or the one little uh, face grab earlier, just break it up. Uh, the flag head scissors from Yuta just to uh, change the momentum of this matchup here. Over three weeks away and only three ma- four matches announced so far. People at X work can play BCC is it with Mox in Japan since he's in a lumberjack match. Eh. Something I've learned. Something I've learned very uh, exponentially here. People will complain on X. I know it's shocking, isn't it? I like the fact that it, he that it, BCC isn't there, just because it proves there's somebody else there that it that isn't Mox as part of it, right? I think they're more greedy about wanting the BCC there. I'm sure B, well, BCC getting a ride to Japan, getting to work a new Japan card. I'm sure they would have loved going. Danielson would have been overjoyed. KJ, how you doing? Hope you're doing well today. Absolutely crazy day for everybody.
Oh, it's gonna go for the uppercut. Dax said nope. Wow, BCC just said nope. Let's go. Oh, absolutely busy. I still can't believe it's June already. It was funny. I was at work today. All right, Jay Quick, you're about a minute ahead of me here. I don't know who I want to win this. I want the fans to win. I'll be honest. I would like to see the BCC win this. Or not BCC, FTR to win this. Just because they don't get out wins too often anymore. And both guys are just, oh, this is funny. I, I will say with the full pants and the, and the weight belt, Dax looks like mini Ishii. in some ways predictions for the game today I'll leave those predictions up to little Wayne over here yo I predict a very exciting game that will not be the worth the cost of the merchandise that they're selling right now if you guys haven't heard a uh the golf shirts that they have for the Stanley Cup final are 121 bucks a piece. To say the least. What I'm afraid of is FTR wins. They would say we want the bucks. Then the acclaimed would, would say we want. No, I, I don't think uh, FTR is going to go anywhere near the bucks for right now. We've had that go on for a while here. And I, I think they're going to. I think they're gonna stay. I think they're gonna float right now for more than, more likely, more than anything else. Tate Mayfair's what a logo there! What a, what a picture! What a promo pic! Looks like he's staring off into space here. I wanted my dad to pick me up a finals hat. Those are going for what sixty bucks right now. Like, to me, it's just, it's stupid how much they cost. You're paying for the experience, not for the, not for the actual item. Like, I was going to pay, pay for one of those City Connect jerseys, but. Tate Mayfair is the news caterer. <laughs> there would be at least still be around 40. I heard 60, but. What I've also like here's an example of what, what I'm talking about here when it comes to pricing here for the finals. The watch along tonight down at Rogers Place. Throughout the playoffs, it's been five dollars going towards charity. For the Stanley Cup final, twenty bucks per person. So now this experience is even written. What is Claudio doing? Sorry, I was looking at the chat and all of a sudden I turned around, Claudio's doing boot salts off the top. The hell is going on here? It really is tough for, to have two faces in an opening match because the crowd doesn't really know who to cheer for right now. You know it's going to be a good match, but maybe they're hoping the higher price tag it sells out either way, right? People still pay for the twenty dollar drinks and everything like that. Swiss is like, see, I can fly. We can also crash and burn too. I keep forgetting that was in picture in picture too. This week, since it is live, we don't uh, get the picture in picture here in Canada. We get the actual full feed of everything. I do believe that Fight International gets. But we got a real good month of wrestling here that's going on. Like, tonight we got Collision, this jam-packed card. Tomorrow, NXT Battleground. I'm sure you can check out Ed and Astrid and uh, 
the gang over at OLE who are uh, will definitely be covering that. They're coming up next Saturday is Clash of the Castle from uh, from Scotland. We got Dominion tomorrow morning, which more New Japan going crazy. Best of Super Juniors is going to be wrapping up here soon. And then, uh, yeah, Forbidden Door, wrap, wrap it up the month here. Plus, you got, like, for me personally, Summer Games Fest, Xbox Showcase, all these indie showcases that are coming up. I, I swear to God, I'm, I'll put it on my mother's grave. Last night, I literally... It was actually Tears of Happiness. Finals are best of Super Judy tomorrow with Dominion as well. Okay, so yeah, that I didn't realize the finish was there. Sorry. I have two experts here, Bellball and Andre. They do a fantastic job covering it on our YouTube page. Oh, he missed. And he missed. Like, what the hell's going on here? Let's just throw some knees up just for the hell of it. That was all right. Well, weird. What? Somebody get an arm on somebody. Try to pin someone here. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I was literally crying yesterday. Just so happy with... They almost missed the finish of the match, damn it. The Street Fighter four or Street Fighter 6 announcements for the four new characters for Season 2. My SNK main's in there. My uh, Street Fighter 3. This should have been the main event. We'll see. We will see. Because I'm, I'm still got faith in Orange Cassidy and Kyle O'Reilly. I really do. And I don't think they actually want to go with... I love Cash when he's doing that. Like, everybody keeps their head covered. Cash just... Cash just flaying his arms half the time. But I, w I will say, no matter what, this is a very good half hour of wrestling here coming up. The camera work is seen a little bit shoddy here, but. Like some of these cuts, they're making a little bit late here tonight, so I don't know if anything's off or what. But uh, watching everything that happened, like. We're getting a Lego, oh God, roll up. I thought we were gonna get that. Thought we were gonna get that for a finish. This has all main event feels, yeah, absolutely. Shivani's right there on it. Wow, Yuna. Yuna with a backdoor save there. Can't get himself, so he's going to shove it. Shove his opponent into his tag team partner. Sorry, I got some hair in my eye or something there. Cut it with the camera cuts, damn it. No, I, I got a feeling that they're probably going to want it. Here's the other thing. You put this match on first because of the hockey game going on. Because you are going to lose fans to the hockey game as the game gets close to the end. So you put your best match here and you put a good match at the end. 
get your good number to start the show. Hopefully people stick around for the rest of it. TV wrestling and pay-per-view wrestling are not exactly... TV, pay-per-view, and... Uh, when it comes to TV, you want to find a way to bring everybody in. And if you... If you don't think you're ma if you think you got two matches that are good really good All right, that sucked. The hell is go Gonna bounce after hockey. Bounce for hockey after this match. I dig what you're doing here. See, this is exactly. I appreciate you, AB. By the way, I thank you for coming by. But you're exactly the reason why they put this match on first. Keep you that impression, right? Of course, time limits. Here we go. Twenty minute time limit. Of course, they're gonna go to that. Just makes sense. Wants to go for that gotch neutralizer. Now he's into the cross face, which is completely crippling. Which we will get to the bell. Now we're gone into the rings of Saturn. And of course you go to the draw. This is why you don't put this as the main event. Bobby's famous for saying those words because in Ring of Honor, this was a common thing. Uh oh, Dax wants a mic. Are you allowed to do that on TV? Seriously. Brandon Cutler, why are you? Oh my goodness, the Stooge is back. So this also plays on the story that uh, the Bucks never show up on Saturdays. So now we get to see four guys beat up on poor Brandon. Over time in wrestling. It happened at WrestleMania 12. Oh, God. Wow. Broken glasses to the crowd. Everybody goes home happy, I guess. Well, yeah, with the draw, this is why you put it first.
Claudio is not about cliches ever. Did you guys know how much uh, Claudio gets in the League of Legends? He actually has his own Twitch channel and everything, and whenever he gets a chance, he gets to have a lot. He actually has a lot of fun on there, and he's one of the best. Seriously, Claudio's Cafe is the uh, Twitch account. If you guys didn't know, see if I, I want to see if I can get, see if I remember this how to do this right. There you go. Give him a follow if you haven't. When he gets on there, it, it's really entertaining what he does, and he's really damn good. Roderick, what do you... Roddy with that stash just scares me. See, I, like I said, I, I knew we were going to get Kyle and OC in main event if we were going to get uh, that tag match. Just, It's like, why the hell am I dealing with you? Saturday night. Statlander with, oh, I was going to say a brand new look, but new Tron though. I like, I like the... I like the 80s Tron there. Very different music. All right, you take care. AB Killen, have yourself a good night. Enjoy the hockey game. <coughs> I'll be on tomorrow with a little MLB The Show. Might be after Battleground, might not. We'll see how things go here. Uh, other than that, I will be back on Wednesday for AEW Dynamite and the Florida Panthers already have a lead four minutes in. <laughs> Just thought I'd you know, throw that out there right now, get that out of the way. Wayne, help me out here, bud. Wayne, help me out, seriously. Yeah, Zodiac, you're right on your way here. I... It's going to be interesting to see how the series comes out. I could see many ways where Florida just trounces Edmonton. I could see many ways where Edmonton just trounces Florida. I could also see this going 7-7 seven, seven in overtime. It'll be interesting to see if, if the Oilers can win one in Florida. For me, I think that's one of the key things. If they win one in Florida and then Florida has to travel for the first time in forever. Like what, it's been two months since they've been outside their time zone? And to me, that that is one of the bigger differences. Statlander just said nope. Oh. 
Stanland is just decimating right now. Saturday night special. We're out of here. I feel bad for Robin. Like, this is three weeks in a row she's been used as cannon fodder. Oh, goody. Caitlin Clark got robbed. Ah! Talking about the U.S. women's basketball team. Chris is so funny as a heel. Like you can tell in a way that she's just joking inside right now. Okay. She's going to be the first entry into the heart tournament. Yippee ki yay yay! And she's going to win. She's going to be the number two entrant. Where Willow's music? Willow's music? Anybody? Yeah, I got a feeling there's going to be a a little bit of uh, Willow Nightingale involved in that that story. We're getting Dustin versus Johnny here tonight. Oh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And Johnny's probably going to get on a winning streak. We're going to see a Canadian Destroyer. Life's going to be all good here. But once again, everybody, thank you for stopping in here tonight. I do appreciate it. On a very busy Saturday night. Um, there's so many things going on. And I just appreciate the fact you were able to stop in to say hello. And uh, hang out with us here on a beautiful night here. Uh, just looking over any notes that are coming up. Nope, nothing coming up here directly here. So just as we're going through the card here tonight, like we got Forbidden Door coming up on uh, the 30th here. We got so much to go through between now and then. Uh, Stephanie Vacker's got a defense of the uh, New Japan Strong title coming up next Saturday. They put out the stipulation if... If Vacker loses her championship, the Vacker versus Monet match will only be for the TBS title. So there could be a chance that New Japan shuttles that title away and... Maybe get it back to Vacker after 
after Forbidden Door, and there might be a possibility here. We, we're not 100% sure, but that could be a possibility here, right? So uh, we're also looking at oh, Swerve versus uh, Osprey is our main event for that show, so that's going to be a lot of fun here. But yeah, it's... We're going to get a few more matches coming up here, guaranteed. Moxley's going to be facing somebody for the IWGP title. I almost guarantee it. Unless it, unless he loses it at Dominion, which I don't think is going to happen. I don't know if Evil is exactly going to be the... the person to take it off Moxley, but you never know. As we're about to come back from commercial break here. So what are you guys looking most forward to this month? Like, in terms of wrestling, in terms of sports, in terms of pretty much anything right now, like, there is so much going on, and I know there's... The end of June's usually a lot of life-changing stuff. Like, I hear people moving. I hear people... Uh, well, high school graduation happens in June for a lot of people, and... I hope that's a first round match. Yeah, I got a feeling she knows what's going to go down at the end of this match. He's going to bring up the stipulation about the... Uh, about the automatic title match at Wembley, which, duh. It's amazing how many years Dustin's been in this rig. Let's see if uh, Johnny and Ty come out in Canucks gear again. Nope, they're a little more back to normal. There's very easy way you can. Oh, and just as I saw the old Twitch box here, thank you to... Congratulations to everybody. Hope you had a very happy National Friends Best Friends Day. Which I find it ironic that uh, Orange Cassidy is going to be main event to this show once he's lost all his friends. I think they're standing for Dustin, to be honest here. All right, so they're going to Ohio next week. All right, that... Like, Dustin, I, I love the fact that he does get these occasional spots in the rig. As they get... Uh, like, Dustin need, doesn't need a lot of work to get himself over. 
You can pretty much plug and play him into any feud without an issue. He's like perfect for a mid card on TV, right? Um, what the hell is that? Dustin ducking out a little hard way there. As Dustin throws the, uh, Taya's face is amazing there. Just a bra. Oh, this is great. All right, throw it in. I love that they got this mic down here. And Dustin, yeah, he heard this one. What the hell is that? Sorry, Dustin, you're, you're good, but yeah, that was a miss. Tyus starts to dust the jet. Makes sense. By the way, good to see you tonight. Hope you're enjoying your Saturday. Nice and hopefully it's nice and peaceful here and not as frantic as, you know, most people here at Edmonton. Got my buddy Gretz here that hopefully, you know, helps things out here as we go. Now, like I said, this is a, this is a pretty good match. You just stick in the middle of a card. It doesn't have to be great. Does it have to be perfect? It's like we learned in WWE 2K by GM, right? Your your middle card matches don't have to be great. Don't have to be spectacular. Like after that 20 minute war we had at the start of the show between FTR and uh, BCC. Then we're gonna get Tate and Daniel here at the uh, that's probably going to be the top of the hour. Then uh, we're going to have Tony Storm and Lady Frost. And then our main event's Kyle O'Reilly, Orange Cassidy. Taya's got to love to get paid just to sit down there and kiss her boy, kiss her husband a few times. I can't remember the last time we actually had Ty in the ring for a match, though. Might have been that last match up here at Edmonton with Britt Baker. Ah, uh, good old Dustin. He was just trying to help. He just slipped. Yeah, I don't think it's going to matter if, uh, like, this is one of those matches that unless you're going to start a feud somewhere, you're just looking for a good wrestling match to keep the crowd over right now. Is Dustin bleeding already? I see the referee putting on gloves right now. Obviously, gloves that are too small for him. Must have a bit lip or something here. Keep forgetting when we have picture in picture like this. So 
don't steal somebody else's move, okay? He was trying to do it the Cody Rhodes way. All right, now the crowd's a little more fired up, but. I love that snap power slab. Dustin is just such a great fulcrum for that. Him, Orton. Like just the pop that you get off that 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 power slab is just absolutely it. beautiful. Go over the curtain call. I love that Shivani doesn't know all the specialty names for all the moves. He just calls it just as he sees it, right? Like ever since Kevin Kelly's been, well, Kevin Kelly used to do the same thing. He wouldn't do any study before. Dustin hanging on the corner. We haven't seen a Canadian destroyer yet, so we're not going to get nothing yet. Oh, here he is. Shivani! Thank you, bye, Joe. Don't, you don't have to correct them, but still, it just, it sucks. Well, Ty, you, you're not getting any fun tonight. You can't win with a crossroads. Come on now. Oh, here we go. Greco Roman lip lock coming up. All right, we got a little ejection going on. Oh, there we go. Oh, the unintentional low blow. Time to hit the overdrive and then the starship paid. All right, here we go. Another knee. He's being serious here. Oh, there you go. There's three. You know, you do three. That's how it works. Okay, never mind. I stand corrected. Busaiko knee. Curtain call. I hate to say it, folks. I, I, I love Dustin to death. I love the story in this match. I love how it went through. Tony needs help. I understand this is a match that's sort of in the middle. Of, you know, you don't really need... I did like it for a little bit, but... If you, if you suddenly screw up one thing or the other, fine. But if you're going to do it consistently... Oh God. Is this setting up another forbidden door match? Or is the fact he's getting in the Owen? I could see Dustin retiring at the end of the collision run in Texas.
I don't win a lot, in other words. Now, why would we? Why would we abandon this guy? Yay, he loves us. But. Really? I want to talk about the one they call scapegoat Jack Taylor. Well, okay, here we go. Now we're cooking a little bit. Jack, when you left, we missed you. One guy yells, no, we didn't. True. All right, so we might actually get a feud with Jack Perry involved. I can see that one guy cheering for the elite get beaten up in the crowd. Ooh. It's true. Wow. We got the mute button out. Let's go. Wow. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Uh, honestly, you'll always be a follower. Okay. Okay. You 
Whoa, really? Shout out to his gold dust. If you don't remember from his time in WWE, his gold dust, he would always use that phrase. You never forget the name of <sighs> gold dust. And just throwing it. That, that, I love. You know what? The cadence of the promo was a little slow after what could be seen as a little bit of a slow match. But it got the job done. It sets us up, get, shows us why we're getting this match on Wednesday. And I, I'm looking forward to it. I want to see what Jack Perry could do in singles action again. It's been such a long time since we've seen him one-on-one -on -one outside of New Japan. Like literally the last time we saw him go one-on-one -on -one was the uh, the Wembley show when he uh, when him and Punk got into it, right? So it'll be nice to see what happens here in this situation here as everything gets together. And obviously they're going to get Perry to win by some devious situation, but it'll be fun to see how uh, they set this up for things going forward because you could almost see Dustin and Swerve are two of the members of Team AEW it looks like taking on the elite and blood and guts but a decent first hour you know like I said uh, earlier you're going to get a bit of a drop off following the uh, the first match to go right to the hockey game which I, I'm not a big man for for numbers. I, I do this because I enjoy what I'm doing or else, you know, a lot of things would change. But I did notice a dip after that first match because a lot of people were heading to the hockey game or whatnot. I, I like to see that big number right up front. Be interested to see what happens if they would uh, put that as the main event. Oh, no, it's fine. Don't worry, Zodiac. I appreciate you. I, I see the numbers. I can figure out pretty much who is here and who isn't and just hanging out. And I know controller prepare could be such a pain to the ass. But, yeah, I because I got, well, I had to do a little PC repair manually here in the last few weeks on my laptop. It's my editing computer, not my streaming computer. My streaming computer, I'm still new enough that I can take it into uh, the Memory Express I got it from and just swap everything out. I was thinking about getting a fourth monitor for it, but that seems like a little much. But I would like to get some extended me memory put into it, so i got to figure out how to do that here. Well, at least we know somebody from New Japan that's going to be on the Forbidden Door card now. Nice job. Nice job showing the match from last year, but. Oh, we are getting Zach and Orange. Okay. Oh, goody. Unscheduled match time.
Now, Sterling's going to get his ass kicked just as much as Hook and Joe. Hook and Joe will take all three of them out in about two minutes, right? Oh, no, it's an already in the ring team. Dang. They're actually going to give the premier athletes some, some primo time here? Is Tony Codd actually trying to get some characters over? Well, they didn't get their intro that much. All right, nice quote there. I have to say that, you know, at least they're giving these guys a match just so we could sort of give some sort of credibility to them before they get absolutely killed by Joe and Hook. He's got a winning tag team for one week. One, one tenth of Samoa Joe's music, and that'll be the end of that. Oh, they're they're not even showing Joe. All right, Sky. Yep. We can reach the sky. You like me, and I like me, and therefore I like you. Oh, the crowd goes wild! Got my Tony Storm uh, shirt on today. Thanks to AEW for collaborating with Street Fighter 6, which, like I said, I am so hyped over the Street Fighter 6 announcement yesterday. So excited over next year's uh, new characters. Like, don't get me wrong. Bison this year is going to be a hell of a lot of fun, but next year, oh, Elena and May coming up in 2025. Or my Shiri and I, yeah. Here I'm late, I'm full of beer. Who wants to make up? Well, considering Mina Shirakawa, Tony Storm, and Mariah May are in the ring, I'm sure you guys can make out quite fine right there. Can you feed some beer maybe to the Oilers? Maybe that'll wake them up here. It's all serious. It's good to see you here, Big G. We, you missed a humdinger of a match between uh, uh, FTR and uh, the BCC to start off the show. This should be a lot of fun. Went to a night market that was, uh, you know, all markets can't be, can't be good ones, you know. We got a couple um, extra markets that have been going on here. Not much for late night markets though. This city's pretty much shut down at this point. Not like Calgary where, you know, they've almost run out of water, but, uh, here at Edmonton, we just shut down for hockey. I 
like the fact that Tony's gone from all black to all red now. She started to make a transformation back to quote unquote normal. Lady Frost, she get more TV. T she actually gets quite a bit of ROH time. I know that. She had a bit of a run in uh, in Impact back when it was still Impact. But yeah, she definitely is an athlete that deserves more. She infamously told off WWE because as soon as they saw her age, they wouldn't even give her a tryout. Or they told her point blank, you will not get signed because of your age. I say time should be no factor in terms of what you're doing because hell I picked up I picked up this full time streaming gig like this I think it was what 42 I opened this channel up when I was 40 so she's younger than half of the WWE roster I'd say more like three quarters Oh, well, that was funny. <laughs> but yeah, some of the other news we got uh, this Wednesday, we're going to get Dustin Rhodes against Jack Perry. They haven't been having much luck on these apron spots in terms of kick getting as flush as they probably want to. Dustin was having problems. Frost is having few problems. Luther getting over with the crowd. I absolutely love it. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, Willow or sorry, Chris Statlander and Willow Nightingale have been announced as the first two entrants into the Owen Hart Foundation tournament. The winner of that tournament is going to be facing the champion at uh, Wembley. Uh, Nigel Nigel's trying to you try, trying to go somewhere between Je Bobby Heenan and Jerry Lawler in this match and it just ain't, ain't catching here you would think with all that cushion back there it wouldn't be that harming of a blow would it just saying but if it's all muscle, I can sort of understand it, but. Where are we at here? 10 after seven. We still got 50 minutes left. So I got a feeling this match is going to get a bunch of time here. Oh, heard a lot of crazy crap again, of course. Sorry about that chat. Just had a note come up here. I had to respond to there.
there has been some entertaining wrestling tonight. It just, I'll, I'll admit, like, the vibe just hasn't been there for these some of these matches. And that, that also happens when there's... Oh, trying to go with the hip attack and just not available. Ow! There's your hip attack. Everybody's ass is hurting now. Even Tony's not even on his game here tonight. Oh, nice reversal. Shocking to say the least. Oh my. Like seriously, Frost, like McGee had it right on the ball here. Frost deserves a hell of a lot more time than she's getting. I was gonna say Frost ain't gonna get that mood saw from there, cause backstabber with a flip. Looks like Travis Witt. Oh! Really? They got the contract. Oh, I, I definitely know. Uh, both Travis Will Travis Williams is a former. Uh, I believe it, they're a former champion here in Love Wrestling here in Edmonton. And Judas Icarus has been out here for a show or two as well, but. Yeah, they made their name out in BC. Congratulations to both of them. Breaking news here on the channel. No, it, uh, Storm Zero cleaned that up in a hurry, but yeah. Now, do we get to see Mina come out and they have that celebration again, which basically you just hold yourself in silence and just hold your chin up a little bit here. Oh, you heard someone on Reddit say it. Oh. Yeah, I haven't heard anything confirmed, but if that's true, like. Oh my. Oh. Oh, okay. All right, well, this is what most of this night's about. Someone talked to them at Defy on Mania Weekend. Oh. Well, I think this last taping was the first time they've actually worked, right? You know what the funny part is? It, it, this is starting to make a little bit more sense to me. After Tony beats Mina at Forbidden Door, I could see Mariah actually turning on Tony. It sort of makes somewhat sen some sense there. Well 
Lee and Dante next week. Let's go. That's going to be a lot of fun. Lee and Dante. Let's hope all the... There's going to be no shenanigans because there's no seconds outside. So Julia Russell, ELP in Vancouver, he was... Yeah, Judas does deserve to get put over quite a bit here. And, well, ELP is ELP. Like, it wouldn't have surprised me if ELP was on uh, on Forbidden Door here coming up in a couple weeks. But, yeah, like, and Travis Williams, like, he does so much. Like, he is such a good wrestler. And for just such a young guy that he, as young as he is, like he is just a fantastic wrestler and if they did get signed to TNA which I hope that that's the case I know that I know they were there for the last set of tapings if they uh, if they end up being a part of that that roster like I think they're going to fit in like a glove and that tag division could always use a little extra boost here right the system's got all the titles right now but it would be nice to get them a nice little challenge from some newcomers out of Canada because we know Western Canada does produce some of the best wrestlers around, whether they're signed or not. Like, hell, I'll still put my money on. If you give me a... Travis Lee was the ADW champion when you first saw him, yeah. First chance I got to really see him was a couple of shows here in Edmonton for love wrestling here he had a big feud with uh, michael richard blaze which uh basically is the standard bearer here in alberta and uh culminated in a huge ladder match which some of the craziest stuff i've seen in forever and throw in the fact that randy myers was part of this whole feud just yeah just Throwing Ravis Randy in there with with Michael Richard Blaze and Travis Williams and in a in a chaotic ladder match where I think I think I saw that Blaze went off a twenty foot ladder through two tables with both guys on him, but then you watch Travis just smooth as silk with guys that have been in the rig 13, 14 years, and he hasn't been in there that long. I don't, I I'm pretty sure of that. have a if I do remember Seeks like is it is it July that NEW is running their next show or is it in June still here because I know NEW is one promotion that definitely if you get a chance to check out out in the BC Vancouver area it's definitely worth worth your time whether that be over on the YouTubes or whether it be live in person and I, I see that that's where in many ways, I see that that is an advantage that uh, a lot of BC promotions have over Alberta. The access to video on-demand service is one thing, which I've learned the hard way. But just getting your matches up on YouTube is just... It's pretty much not existed for most of the promotions out here. I'd say a good half of them. Like, I've heard that Top Talent has a deal with Fight the fight app to put their matches up on there but I'll, I'll be honest I haven't I think I've seen one show Shibata <laughs> oh, this is awesome. 
Good AW because these you reach by trade downtown, baby. I love that the chairs are numbered. <laughs> no crying in wrestling. You notice that he's got Shibata in the background, so we're getting this three, this trios group, right? I I thought for a second there they're gonna add Garcia to this. Yeah, whether you're checking out Boom or uh, WrestleCore, those are another two. Uh, promotions out in Vancouver that are definitely worth checking out and Garcia go with the black trunks too so No dance quite yet. Got to dance after you win here tonight. I, I'm sorry if he ends up doing the Dolph Ziggler intro. Uh, he officially declares himself as a jobber wrestler. That's one lesson that you learn when it comes to these wrestlers. <laughs> no, uh, what they do for the creative wrestlers is they create a combination of different attributes from other wrestlers to put them all together. The creator wrestler, then throw them out there as uh, signable characters. I think anybody would like to hold the title besides Wheeler right now. Hopefully Wheeler starts getting some singles matches. We get that title back in use again. Well, two minutes into the second. It is now 2-0 uh, Panthers. I might have to bring the Panthers mascot onto the show on Wednesday just to change the tide here a little bit. Go cats. Hmm. I don't even have a sound where I could except using the same one again. That's just B. Big, biggest thing I can all I can say right now. They don't they don't even deserve the full three. So yeah, we're gonna get they're gonna get another ten minutes here of this one and then we'll get our main event. Which I think is gonna be a lot of fun. Orange Cassidy and Kyle O'Reilly. I thought we were gonna get this on Wednesday until we had two of the wrestlers decide to show up. But it is a little weird that they're doing a lot of face face matches there. For both your opening and your closing matches, right? Twisted shout. Wanted to go for the choke slam and end up saying nope. I love that shotgun drop kick, even though it looks looks horrible. Just a standing guillotine. Oh, 
okay. The Red Cross, I never heard that before, but I'll take it. So I know some wrestlers moves, but some, some he doesn't. Picture being that guy down below there having to watch this. And have the sweat fly onto him. For the sickos. That's going to be an interesting match there. Mercedes and Zeusies. The last time we saw Zeusies on American television was the Mae Young Classic. All right. I'm glad they're giving her a package. I like that Excalibur's giving the info because it, it just seems like he gets an extra level of credibility there. Oh, there's your story. So, yeah, if, if you didn't hear about, like, for anybody that's w watching the chat and not, not knowing what we're talking about here, oh, what the hell is that? TV time with Chris Jericho gets an automatic one of those every time. So that's how Perry's going to get into the ladder match. Beating Dustin. Oh, great. But yeah, for, for the sickos, that's something that Tony Khan uh, uh, posted yesterday on X. Uh, it was a combination of, because he was getting some good stuff. There is a story. Cod tells quick stories, but they're there if people pay attention. Exactly. Our one year anniversary. To, oh, Father's Day. Yes. Christian with a Father's Day special next week. Let's go. And it's going to be the night that the Oilers clinch the Stanley Cup, too. It's going to be perfect. Yes, I know that could be the night that Florida does as well, but I digress. No, okay, so this is where we're finally getting our get no DQ match between Peraza and Rosa. Or, yeah, Peraza and Rosa. Or they're going to oil and get swept. Maybe. Maybe. But uh, Tony Codd decided to shoot his mouth off a little bit at the people that... Because he's starting to get proven right by many different sources. Uh, it's been revealed now that Rosie Agawa's biggest backer for... I uh, guess my dad will support the Oilers. Eh. Uh, sorry. Get diverted. I'm going to go back here. Rosie Agawa has uh, pointed out in interviews that he will, his bi his biggest supporter to break away from stardom and start his own promotion was Paul Levesque. Kyle 
Talk about a change in character right now. Ooh. So that was proven true. And then add that on to the uh, melts are going on to uh, inform us that some of the quick numbers that are being produced, like when it comes to TV ratings, the, the normal ratings that come out for the show come out like for tonight will come out on Monday. They take about 24 hours to fester, to gather, and uh, to develop, like, most of the ratings that they consider within 24 hours. Because that is, uh, that's a metric for everybody that PVR or DVRs this show. Or it goes back and checks it up on, uh, on demand. And, uh... It was proven to Meltzer that people at WWE were feeding low numbers for AEW shows to certain reporters. And then when the actual numbers come out, it showed that it's a lot higher. But when they're already reported as the pre-numbers being so low, the reputation gets out and whatnot. So Tony Khan basically just to get to sit back and say, you know, maybe I'm not as bad as a booker as people think I am. And the final tipping straw of it when Tony Cobb released the uh, meme and then started going on his rants, Andrade talking about how it, it was a quick post from, uh, I believe it was from Angel Garza, uh, talking about how, why is Vince McMahon so focused on these, uh, or sorry, why, why is WWE focused on all these racially generated uh, feuds? Like the Latinos going after Latinos and etc. And Andrade's like, yeah, I know. And hates being on TV right now. Even though he is scheduled to become speed champion. Which, take it as a will. In AEW, Andrade never won the speed championship. Exactly. But Tony Khan gets out here and says, hey, I guess my booking isn't that bad after all. And then some guy comes out and says, you guys are sick for some of this, some of the stuff you're booking. He's like, yeah, I book for the sickos. I guess I book for us sickos out here who like good wrestling. And then it just took a life of its own as it always does. I, like I said, like what you like, hate what you hate. It, it, it's like uh, we're in the middle of Pride Month and it's always such a big issue that everybody has a certain set of ideals and they think they are they have to be right and etc. For me, it's just simple. Like what you like. If you don't like it, don't worry about it. Go worry about something else. There's enough stuff in your life. Lord knows, like I said, on a Saturday night, it's pretty, it, it's pretty insane how much stuff you have available to do on a Saturday night. That's why I'm always grateful for you guys when I started to do Collision here every week. That you guys came out and supported me and I do I do appreciate it. Because literally you have so many other things you could do on a night like this. And so far I hope I haven't disappointed you that much. As, as everybody bucks out for the next one here. Just a reminder, t next stream is going to be tomorrow night. As of right now, I am playing the start a little early, around 6 o'clock, but we do have... Uh, there is an NXT TakeOver going on the same night, so I might wait. Just take a look on X. I could probably just watch it after and catch up with it. It's just like... It's like any other show with, with WWE. The, the commercials in between just cost too much time to waste so usually I watch it on delay and cut a a three hour show down to you know an hour and a half but yeah we're gonna work on some theme teams and maybe try to uh, maybe throw some events out again Oh, great. The Undisputed Kingdom. Well, 
And all right, one of the sides out there that still keeps going up, I got to get my two cents about this. Uh, Caitlin Clark got robbed as the big side you've seen tonight most consistently put up. Uh, the U.S. Olympic team has been announced for the women. Caitlin Clark was left off the 12-person roster. And it is reported that senior executives put, kept her off the roster because despite the amount of views you, they would get and the amount of people watching, they think that people would be more upset with the lack of time that she's going to get on the court because they don't think she'll be any more than like an 11th, 12th person on the team that uh, they didn't think it would be worthwhile having her on having her on the roster. I, I will say this. Maybe don't decide who's already on the roster already. Is Ricochet all elite? No. Uh, Ricochet is under that long list of people that their contracts are coming up in the next few months. Technically, right now, Chad Gable is a free agent. Uh, you also have Natalia that's very close to having her contract expire. Ricochet. Becky Lynch, of course, is a free agent right now. Now he's caught the guard. <laughs> so to answer your question very quickly, no, Rick Ricochet is not all elite yet. A lot of people have rumored that uh, that's... Yes, Ricochet is still under contract, but it's only for like another month. It's still this summer that he's uh, his contract is up. He was part of that massive uh, five-year spree of hiring uh, way back in 2019. That's why all these contracts are coming up. Is right as AEW is opening, uh, in a counter to Tony Cobb picking up wrestlers, uh, you had... Yeah, there, he's aggressively being pursued, but let's put it this way. He's got a, t I, I guarantee he's got a temporary deal in place right now for next Saturday because him and Zayn have that match at Clash of the Castle. If, uh, if he signs, he'll win. If he doesn't sign, he'll, he'll lose. It, it's a very common tactic that TK, uh, well, UFC is done is they don't start co contract negotiations with wrestlers until very very close to the deadline the only difference is between TKO like what UFC deals with TKO and WWE is when you get uh, when you get a UFC fighter where his contracts run out he's not going to be able to the fight for what three four five months depending on uh when the medical doctors clear him and whatnot after his last fight with wwe you go next week right after your match another one on that list and he's being aggressively uh talked to as well is uh one uh dijak donovan dijak or donovan dijakovic is actually what he would be named outside of WWE here. Yeah, he's getting uh, lined up as well. So TKO is going to be spending a lot of money soon. And it looks like Tony Khan, if he wants to take advantage of it, he could open up his wallets as well. So my opinion, if he gets Gable in here, that might be the biggest side they get. Because that is somebody that WWE is aggressively pushing right now. Again, 
And in many ways, that could be a possibly a bigger one than Lynch. And hear me out on this. People should never get how much a billion dollars really is. Exactly. It's all about who wants to fork out the money. But don't forget this. And I, I, with, with, with all due respect to Becky Lynch, and I do think Becky here, if, if like I said, if Becky, and I... I, I do realize I do get the realization that the chances of her leaving WWE are very poor. I would love for it to be a secret and happen while she's still on the WWE roster page. But I digress. Um But the fact that she while she has her book out, it was almost as she was a placeholder at that point. And it wasn't the worst thing if Becky actually took some time off and took away from the screen. Not because she isn't a great wrestler, it's just you're learning that many people are getting fatigued from certain wrestlers at certain times, right? So we're, we're learning that from many wrestlers here at different occasions here. Just like the, uh, the Bloodline storyline, while it's taking a different turn, it's under the same moniker and it almost feels like the WWE ECW version of the bloodline for lack of a better term the reason I think Chad Gable will be a bigger bigger push compared to what uh, Becky Lynch or anybody else would Natalia anybody there WWE is actively pushing Chad Gable right now this is why Drew was going to be such a big boon if he would have came in it's somebody that looks like WWE wants them because of the push that they are giving him. If there's some way that Tony Cod, hell, even if TNA would, yes, I understand there might be a, an agreement like that going on. But at the same time, if they were managed to, if they managed to squeeze away one of these talents that WWE is actively pushing, seriously that that gives you a look of oh they wanted him there and he still left what's going on here but the key thing is once that happens it's all on Tony Khan then because if you sign him and then you don't put him in a position to push then it shows that you know you just buy him if you get him and you push him to the moon right away, not saying the heavyweight title, but feature matches. If you get him in feature matches going forward, it will, it could be shown as that little thing to make you legit, right? Also depends if they want money and a good schedule or if they want glory. Like you said, it, it depends on everything that they want or what they don't want, right? And that's why I say never never expect anything out of anybody when it comes to decisions like this. Remember Paul Heyman's famous promo to JBL at One Night Stand 2005? JBL, the only reason you became world heavyweight champion is because Triple H did want to work on Tuesdays. It's very apropos to this case. I think Mercedes was getting pushed to there's also a thing about direction or uh, time too, right? Mercedes Mercedes was getting pushed as a tag champ with uh, Naomi, but the tag titles were never getting defended. There was actually, I believe, almost three months between title defenses on the women's tag titles. 
of course, Vince was always saying that, you know, yes, we are getting to it. We just give us a little time. But it's like they're always saying it. They're always getting more time till they do it. And the fact that it took so long for the difference here, I think that's also that. I think she also got signed before Vince got ejected. It was right around the time that Vince got... Because apparently they talked it all in, but the, the actual signing happened in December, and I do believe it was near the end, around Christmas time when Vince got punted. No, that's when Vince was starting to come... I, that, this goddamn storyline of Vince McMahon's going to be the death of me here. But it's how much do you believe what, what's going on in your booking? How much do you believe in yourself? How much do you believe in your company? And the reason I don't think it would, I don't think Mercedes would be as big as Gable would be this time is also timing. How long was it since Mercedes left? Uh, how long has it been since Mercedes left to when she signed with AEW? It was a good year. Pretty, pretty close to a year. If Gable signed, it would be a matter of a week, two weeks. And it gets instant. People don't even have a lot of his thoughts in WWE and he's already at AEW. Like, that's where the credibility will come in, right? But like I said, more often than not, this is going to be for not. It's no different than the uh, draft that they had for Raw and SmackDown uh, way back when. Everybody was pissed off. Why weren't there any changes? It's like the NFL. Why don't you have more changes? Well, it's because most teams focus on keeping their own. And most people are happy dealing with their own. As Cassie just rolls himself out of the ring. Was it Brad Hart who lost the championship at WWF and then showed up in WCW the next week? Uh, well, Bret Hart... Bret Hart, after the screw job, I do believe he did wait. I think there was a, a break in between. I know there's Rick Rude who ended up on two different, three different shows in the same week. That that would be another example of that, but yeah, because there was a gap of time there, because it wasn't an instant impact the way that everybody thought it was. Like there's a, I I know this is going to be shocking to most of the people in chat here, but there's a lot of revisionist history in the uh, screw job. A lot of it has to do with lying. A lot of it has to do with creative editing. And it also has a lot to do with typically the winners uh, get to tell the story. Very rarely do you get to hear the uh, final version of a story from the person who got defeated. But yes, there was the... Uh, Because of the lack, I know there were some wrestlers back that showed that showed up at WCW and immediately made a huge impact. Actually, Hogan wasn't. He left to go do a movie. He left WWE. He left to go film Trouble in Paradise. That's the uh, that's the infamous movie where he met Ric Flair. And he, Flair convinced Hogan to meet with Eric Bischoff. There was a gap. Because originally Vince asked Hogan not to... Not to go to Turner after all this if he was that bored. Go do movies. So... 
So yeah, no, uh, Hogan, Hogan did not come up immediately. Uh, I would say people that came up somewhat quickly would be the Radicals. Jericho, well, Jericho had a bit of a countdown break, but pretty close to... Most people didn't notice he was gone from from WCW to hit WWE. There wasn't that many that were going the other way with such a quick turnaround like that. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly and, and Orange Cassidy can do that spot so well. I'm more t thinking WWE after WCW was the other way around because WCW was on. It was also people that didn't get the opportunity, but WWE after WCW, there wasn't a whole lot, to be honest. Yes, people were showing up over there, but it wasn't like they were just leaving one and then, sh and then showing up on the other. I'd have to take a look and take a look at more of the facts, but from what I've seen, it it really isn't that much of a. Because if you look at all those veterans, those veterans weren't doing a whole lot when they left. I think the only one you might have a might have a way of thinking about that could be Savage. But even then, Savage was just on commentary because Vince thought that he was washed up and didn't have it anymore. So he ended up losing like three or four years of the best Savage, right? But yeah, the remainder of the NWO, that pretty much, there was a gap in between. Shivani's going crazy right now, and I love it. A block of the block. Ah, nice. Trying to remove a head from a pocket. That's not something we hear every day. That's something we don't hear every day out of uh, commentary when it comes to something like that. My goodness, man. I love Matt David selling of this. The kryptonite. Put your head in his pocket. Eh. Can't even walk. Oh, rebound. There's a second one. Oh my God, is Orange going to get the win here? Wow. O'Reilly hasn't won in a while. He hasn't pretty much won at all dur during his return. I 
I do have a feeling that we're going to get Tread, Statlander, and uh, Willow out here. Might be a possibility of uh, Zack Sabre Jr. showing up. Because we still got a couple minutes yet before we run out, so. Oh, there he is. All right, I can live with this. See, if the Undisputed Kingdom were real friends now, they would come out and protect... They would protect O'Reilly. Oh, a nice little handshake. Job is done. Well, I'm not going to be around picking up pieces for log. All right, well, Willow feels bad because she wasn't out here to help at all. We might even get a six-person mixed tag. All right, so we're getting the rundown for next week, which is going to be absolutely insane on Dynamite. We're, get, we're getting uh, Phoenix and Osprey for the international title. We're getting Dustin Rhodes, Jack Perry. We're getting Zeusies and Monet. We're, we're going to get a lot more than that, I guarantee it, as we're coming along here. Well, of course, because, you know, more than four matches, but... <sighs> good finish, good start. Meh, all through the middle, I would say. Definitely uh, a Saturday night special, if you'd ever call it that. Uh, they they put everything up pretty much uh, just the way you need to here. Let me just put a snooze on. So we're going to wrap this up here right away, but I want to make sure that we get through this. No, Zodiac, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, I will admit tonight, uh, like I said, the middle part of the show was, it was good wrestling, don't get me wrong, but it just didn't have a vibe of real gelling, but they did get a lot of storylines in as the fact that we're getting, we know three of the eight people that are going to be part of the women's Owen Hart tournament, uh, Mariah May, Chris Statlander, Willow Nightingale, and uh, on the men's side, I need to write notes down during the show what I never did. We did get one. We're starting to get more and more entries as we get across here. And I like the fact that the Owen's going to start up after. Well, the Owen's going to have to run quick here because July 15th is coming up quick. And that's when they're going to have it here in, in uh, Calgary for the finals here. So I'd assume that we're going to get it probably right after Forbidden Door is pretty much going to be quarterfile quarterfile semifile semifile final final because with eight eight uh 
eight different ma eight different matches here on each draw they're really gonna have to pump those through so but yeah we're starting to set up for possibly a six person tag six person mix tag for our main event here our opening match two faced like here's the biggest problem you had you had two faces at the end two faces at the beginning facing each other your crowd doesn't know who to cheer for and who to cheer against so it really did help yourself get yourself over and then you know the rest of the rest of the card was acceptable i, I would have to say this is one of the i don't want to say roughest but i think one of the one of the enjoyable but not the most pleasurable i think is the best way to put it um match it or uh, cards of uh, collision that we've had going on here i can't really say it was a bad card because you know we did have a few botches here and there mostly by dustin there that one in that one match with johnny just because they were played by feel and i don't think dustin felt it a whole lot this match but we'll see how it goes on wednesday with him and perry but all in all i just it's a good filler show it gets us over to dynamite next week and starts getting us on the direction where they're going to really have to start wrapping it up towards Finn door coming up on the 30th which once again will be uh i'll be joined by zodiac uh chris complete of the uh retro hangover podcast as uh, he'll be joining me here live on the show as we're checking things out and we're gonna have a lot of fun with that so mm -hmm.